Hello viewers and welcome to the second episode of Space Science with Python. Today I would like to show you how to set up a Python environment that you can use for developing in Python. Well, the last time we were talking a little bit about what this series will be all about. We will use only Python to compute the position of the planets, of asteroids, to compute their brightness and their appearance in the sky, and also use it to create scientific insights from telescope data, from lab data, and also from spacecraft probes. So this will be a pretty nice journey. Um, hopefully you will like it. But before we start, we have to create our environment to work with. And there, well, there's one, I would say, common approach that is used by many programmers. It's yeah, by using virtual environments, using PIP or maybe Anaconda, Miniconda and so on. And these are, this is a very fair approach, so you can install all your required um, libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib and so on. But sometimes you need other libraries that have other um, requirements or require other tools and software that must be installed and is running in the background in your operating system, like for example Qt or for example also Spark if you are interested in distributing it computing. Now this approach I will show you today is only good if you really want to work in Python environments. You don't have any fancy setup running in the background because otherwise it's a little bit yeah, frustrating sometimes to um, update or, or remove or delete these other requirements that are running in the background, especially if you don't want them anymore or don't you don't need them and you're totally losing your overview of what you have installed. But don't worry, we will talk about it next time. So next time I will show you an approach that is, I would say, quite, no, I wouldn't say uncommon, but maybe unknown. And it's pretty amazing. So today we will just start with our common approach by creating a virtual environment. And for that, we are installing Python. I just installed the most recent version 3.9.7 on my Mac OS system. Um, yeah, the, the, the commands or the way I will show it to you today um, can be also applied in Linux and in Windows. I'm not sure about Windows, but the, the approach, uh, the installation procedure I will show you next time is definitely working also on Windows machines. So please don't be frustrated if you think, oh, I, I don't know how to apply all these things on Windows. Don't worry, next time I, what I will show you is completely platform or operating system agnostic and it runs everywhere anytime. Now let's go and install our virtual environment. You may ask or some of you if you're not that deep into Python why creating virtual environments. So if you are forking um, projects or if you create your own projects sometimes you require a certain version of a software or a library and instead of updating and downgrading um, the libraries on your operating system you should create virtual environments where you just have, have your required libraries installed so you can add more uh, virtual environments if, if you like and if you don't need them you can simply delete them without crawling in the depth of your operating system so let's take a look I just installed Python as I just said and um, yeah, this is my uh, folder. We are here in my main folder and I would like to go into the desktop that is basically empty. So here on the desktop, we will create our virtual environment. Of course, this is not the best procedure. You should really <laughs> take care of your folder organization and so on. But since this is only for demonstration effects, it's uh, pretty, pretty okay. So we call Python 3-M and we execute venv, so this virtual environment creation uh, tool and our name should also be uh, shouldn't should be quite clear I just called it now Python 397 and if I press enter you will see on the right top that a new folder will appear with this name and this contains the virtual environment that contains all uh, files that are required to run Python. Now we go into this um, folder and we start it. So now we have to activate the virtual environment. Let's say you are activating the environment, you are now in the environment and you see the name is then here on the left side with source bin activate. Now let's take a look at 
if we just execute Python 3 and we see that yeah Python 397 is installed but we have no libraries yet so numpy is not known and matplotlib is also not known so yeah we have to install it and installing it it's also quite easy you just write pip install and then the packages the number uh, the names of the packages like ipython like numpy or matplotlib let's see if this works yeah so it's downloading now all um, wheel files from the repositories and is installing them this may take some uh, some seconds so only three packages quite 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 fast it also says that i need to up upgrade my pip i'm not doing it now but now let's see ipython should be installed yeah, it works and import numpy. Now this takes some time. I don't know why. Ah yeah, and it's also working. Perfect. So this is how you can set up a Python environment. But well, installing things manually in the shell is not a good idea, especially if you have a project, a collaborative project you would like to share with your colleagues or your friends. Um, it's quite difficult to, to tell them, oh wait, what did I install? Yeah, install NumPy and maybe SciPy and then you forgot to mention them that you have to, they have to install matplotlib as well. It can be confusing and frustrating because yeah, at some point they have to just guess. So instead of typing everything into the shell, we can create uh, requirements txt. So let's uh, deactivate our um, our environment we can also yeah, delete this so we will recreate it in a second clear and let's recreate a complete new one python 397 yeah it asked me if I want to delete the my empty my stash yeah, tra trash yep yeah. python 397 again perfect and now let's open the atom editor and I would like to create a something called a requirements txt that contains the packages that are required from our project so for example I want to have numpy and scipy I need also matplotlib and ipython so you can also write some comments with a hashtag so I don't know numerics and signs can also write here like plotting and interactive interactive shell also you can then of course add more stuff like um, like Jupyter lab and so on but this yeah takes more time now to install so let's keep it very small um, numpy matplotlib and i python so we save it yeah, also let's do it on our um, our uh, desktop and we call it requirements.txt now you see the file just appeared here on the desktop and now we have to go again into our environment activate it and since it's now on the desktop well let's go one back and we see that we have the requirements.txt and based on the requirements.txt we can now make a pip install so we can say pip install dash r requirements.txt so later you can also add more um, libraries and if you have a git versioning and somebody is making a, a pull from your repository that he or she sees ah, okay requirements.txt has been updated I have to update my virtual environment as well so there is no um, speculation whether new updates in the environment have been performed or not so let's press enter and it's doing basically the same thing as before but okay it's collecting now everything from the cache so I should have written no cache dear but this is just fine I think yeah and it's again complaining that pip it has is not um, yeah, pip needs to be upgraded but this is fine yep this is basically it how you set up your Python environment if you want to add also Jupyter lab you can just yeah Put it, write it here or later in your requirements txt Jupyter lab for the Jupyter notebooks again this is um, an approach I will sometimes use it if I'm let's say bored using the other method but uh, again the other method 
is way more sophisticated, especially if you have way more dependencies, dependencies that go beyond the Python world. But we will talk about it next time. And yeah, so until then, enjoy and talk to you later, guys. See you.